Now I've already determined that the chain is a little bit loose, so we're definitely going to have to adjust it. For proper chain tension measurement or slack measurement, the motorcycle is supposed to be jacked up so there's no weight on the rear wheel. Basically what we need is for the suspension to be fully extended on the rear. And you can do it with the bike just on the side stand and leaning it over. And you want to measure the chain tension in multiple places along the chain because the slack can vary. So these are the chain adjusters. This is the lock nut here. Turn this bolt here to push the axle back or you can thread the bolt in and then push against the wheel to move the axle towards the front of the bike. It's the same thing on the other side. You want to adjust the adjusters equally so that the rear wheel is in proper alignment. You could use these reference marks. Now I don't find these reference marks particularly helpful. They're not precise enough. So I usually measure the small ruler from the end of the swing arm to this plate on both sides. Let's remove that cotter pin. So the axle nut here is a 19 millimeter size and on the other side, the other end of the axle is 17 millimeter. Um, I advise using a breaker bar to loosen it up initially and hold the other end as well so it doesn't turn. Okay, I've jacked up the motorcycle. For the adjusters, you're going to need a 10 millimeter wrench and a 12 millimeter wrench. So the lock nut, the lock nut is 12 millimeters and the adjuster bolt is 10 millimeters. Just hold the bolt in place so it doesn't move and then loosen up the lock nut. And we'll do that on the other side as well. So 10 millimeter here and 12 millimeter here. Okay, this is the point where we measure the chain tension. We'll have to do that multiple times. That's one of the advantage of having your bike on a jack, because then you can just rotate the wheel easily. Otherwise, you're going to have to move, push the bike along the ground, and then measure, and then push, and then measure, and then push the measure. What we're looking for is the tightest point of the chain. Okay, here's the Kawasaki KLX 140 service manual. And for the chain drive, here's the chain slack measurements, 35 to 41 millimeters. Here's the picture, shows you where to measure from the base of the chain slider to the bottom of the chain. And it says here, raise the rear wheel off the ground. Okay, and then for the torque, for the axle nut, is 58 foot-pounds or 79 newton meters. We put the ruler there on the swing arm at the base of the slider and lift up. We've got about 47 millimeters, so we're over. There's about 45. There's not a great variation in this chain, but the bike doesn't have that many hours on it. 
That's about 44. Okay, that's about the tightest point. You don't want your chain too loose because you'll get a dr lot of drive line lash, kind of jerky when you're on and off the gas. But from a safety point, both for you and the motorcycle, is if the chain is too loose, there's a greater risk of it coming off the sprockets. Okay, that's about 44. If that happens, a chain can jam up here and cause damage to the engine cases and also lock up your rear wheel, which may result in a spill. So we'll adjust the chain here. Threading this bolt out, the adjuster, will pull the axle backwards, causing more tension on the chain. So to reduce the slack, we move the axle back. And you want to turn the adjusters equally on both sides. In, out. So we'll do about a quarter of a turn. Okay, I adjusted the other adjuster the one on the other side, the same amount, about a quarter turn. And now we'll uh, check the tension again, and slack, about 42. So maybe another quarter turn or so. Okay, and then we do it on the other side as well. Okay, let's measure the slack again. So we're at, we got 39 to 40 millimeters. Okay, we could do it a little bit tighter. Okay, I'm going to adjust maybe another eighth to a quarter turn on each adjuster. All right, and let's measure again. 35, 36, we're good. I attempted to turn each adjuster equal amount. I need to verify that the rear wheel is in proper alignment because I don't like these uh, these adjusting marks here. You can get like ballpark, but they're not very precise. So what I prefer to do is measure from this plate here to the end of the swing arm. Now you want to get in the center there because this is curved. It's almost exactly on nine millimeters. So I'll measure on the other side as well. And nine millimeters as well. Double check the chain slack, 37, that's pretty good. So I'll tighten up the lock nuts on the adjusters while holding the bolt so it doesn't turn. Okay, do that on the other side as well. The wheel is pushed forward as much as possible. And I'll just verify the distance from this adjusting plate to the back of the swing arm. Nine millimeters and nine millimeters. The next step is to tighten up the axle nut. Okay, we check the chain slack again, 38 millimeters. Okay, it's good. So, um, the last step is to torque up the axle nut. It's 58 foot-pounds, and then we'll install the cotter pin. You should use a new one. Um, if perhaps you don't have one, and the one you pulled out of there isn't too mangled, although it's not recommended, you could use it. It's better than no cotter pin.
So after you've torqued up the axle nut, just make one more check on the chain slack. Uh, about 37 millimeters, so we're good. Okay, after you've done that, then you can stick in the cotter pin. Here's the new cotter pin. It's a little bit short, but it'll do. Stick it in the hole there, and then bend it around. Also, you can just use a object like a wrench and just press against the ends of the cotter pin. That'll work. We're all done here. Oh, I should make one other point here. Um, before you check the chain slack, it's a good idea to properly lubricate your chain. Um, otherwise, you may have some kinked links. And if you do, that's going to throw your chain slack measurement off. You don't want the chain to be too tight. Otherwise, it puts a lot of strain on the transmission and uh, it can restrict the rear suspension movement and probably cause accelerated wear on the sprockets and the chain. You don't want it too loose either because you have the increased driveline lash and it's also a greater risk for the chain to come off the sprockets, which could be detrimental to your engine cases and you. All right, I hope you found that useful. Take care, have fun riding.